here's a robot you won't want to kick around. It's Unitree's Bad Bot G1. This robot kicks butt. It knows Kung Fu, Tai Chi, and if you don't flip for it, G1 will. It can run, traverse uneven terrain, and oh yeah, did we mention it knows Kung Fu? G1 is also in the record books for performing the world's first kip up. That is really mind blowing stuff, but how does G1 perform like a futuristic Bruce Lee? Well, we'll explain that coming up, but first, it's our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. Widemuller Term Series Compact Clip On Relay Modules are ultra compact, vibration proof relays designed for maximum machine and system reliability. With a 6.4 mm width and a 63 mm depth, they fit in tight control cabinets and feature push-in connection technology for quick, secure wiring. Integrated fuses and test taps enhance safety and maintenance, while status LEDs simplify function checks. Compatible with the Term Series family, they offer multi-voltage input and continuous cross-connection channels for flexible setups. Ideal for high vibration environments and compact installations, these relays ensure efficient, tamper-proof operation and enhance system protection. To learn more or to purchase these relay modules, head over to mauser.com today or click the link in the description. What is the function of auxiliary contacts? To help explain, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. Most basic motor controls involve contactors, which are really nothing more than an on-off switch for a motor. They're just designed to handle a whole lot of power. But sometimes we don't want to just send the signal out to the contactor, turn it on and say, I hope the motor's running, I hope the contactor received the signal. So we want some sort of basic information coming back. And that's something that we call feedback. Feedback is an essential component of modern control systems, but how do we do that from a device that's as simple as a contactor? There's no processor to figure out a signal, figure out the amount of voltage or current and send that back to a controller. So we use what's called an auxiliary contact block. Sometimes this just is abbreviated to an aux contact. Sometimes you'll hear that phrase referring to these devices on a contactor. They can be all over a contactor depending on the model. Here's one that's mounted to the top. They simply slide it off the top of the contactor. Some others are attached to the side. Some others are built into it completely, which means you don't have to buy an extra contact to attach onto it. But for these ones that are module, or the ones that are built in, we usually find a couple of options. And most of the basic ones have a couple of contact sets, and a contact set always involves two contacts, and they're termed neither, either normally open or normally closed, NO and NC. Now on this one I see an NO and an NC, which means these two terminals are normally open. Now, if you recall reading or hearing about NO and NC, what that means is that if the contactor is off, de-energized, the NO is O, or open. The normal position refers to what it is when the, and when the contactor is off. Normally closed means that while the contactor is off, electricity is flowing. So either way, we can get a feedback signal coming back to the controller that says not only did we send the signal to the contactor, it definitely received the signal and energized. These ones that are attached to the side are also the same. This one involves a set on the top and on the bottom. The top set is normally open, the bottom set is normally closed on these types of contact blocks. These auxiliary contacts often can be mounted to either side, depending on how and where we need to install it in the control cabinet, and when they're on top, we just have to verify that we've properly aligned the wires, not just for the contact set, but also for this auxiliary set that supplies the feedback. If it says NO, shouldn't you be able to use that as another power conductor? No, the size of these auxiliary contacts is not designed to handle the amount of power rated for the contactor. When there's three power terminals, you use those three power terminals to supply power to your load, most likely a motor. Do not use the other auxiliary contact set to supply any sort of load. It's meant only for a feedback control signal. If you need more than three contact sets, you should probably consider getting another contactor to supply the proper current and voltage rating that you need for your load. But these auxiliary contacts are a great way to be able to provide that initial feedback 
to ensure that not only did we send the signal to the contactor, but it effectively received the signal and actually energized properly like it was supposed to. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. So how is G1 pulling off all of these impressive moves? Well, continuous algorithm updates enhance its precision and adaptability. Training begins in NVIDIA's Isaac Simulator, and a digital twin refines these skills by reinforcement learning and sim to -reel transfer. The G1 boasts all of these impressive features and is powered by a 9,000 mAh battery. It runs for two hours with fast swapping, and an eight-core CPU enables agile movements reaching four and a half miles per hour. Compact and efficient, it's designed to be carried to any bully's house. Come on, come on. G1's instinctive motion control marks pretty amazing progress in humanoid robotics, but can it master drunken style? The last one really hit the spot. My money's still on Jackie. For now. Hey, that does it for us. Be sure to click the link on your screen for everything control automation, and we'll see you next time.